Yeah, here's another 5.7 video. I think the Caliber has a lot of potential. Because we don't have enough real-world data points, though, I'm not completely on the 5.7 bang bus yet. Pretty clever. Bang bus, right? I just thought of it myself. Bang, you know, like the sound a gun makes. Bang, bang bus. Should probably think about marketing that. Maybe, I don't know, I could start a bang bus website. I hope nobody else has done that yet. Price is a big deal with 5.7 ammo is expensive. The guns are expensive, at least they were. Back when Gooch manufacturer FN was making the only 5.7 guns out there for a couple of decades. Two grand for a PS90, over a thousand bucks for a 5.7 pistol, plus a buck a round for crap civilian ammo, or 10 bucks a round if you want the Madman SS190 or 198. For that kind of money, 5.7 better shoot good and suck seed in a gunfight. As you gleaned by the change in tents, prices have been coming down. More manufacturers, in addition to FN, are making 5.7 ammo and guns. Federal makes American Eagle 5.7, and now you have AAC, America's Ammo Company, which is Palmetto State Armory's ammo company. You can find their ammo for less than 30 bucks a box. I was never a huge PSA guy, so it pained me when I decided to do a video on the cheapest 5.7 pistol on the market. This, the PSA Rock. For the record, the Smith & Wesson M&P 5.7 is incredible dollar for dollar. The Ruger 5.7, another great inexpensive option. Of all companies, TSIS, the Turkish company, is even going to be making a 5.7 pistol similar to the Ruger 5.7. It actually looks like it's going to be pretty good and probably cheaper than the Ruger. I saw it at Iwa this year, but the cheapest one of them all, the Palmetto State Armory Rock 5.7 pistol. Really funny that they call it the Rock because I felt like I was smoking it back when I spent 350 bucks for this standard PSA Rock in one magazine back in December. That's 1.15 welfare checks to my fellow Florida men out there. The PSA was also about as useful as a Rock when I got it because the fire control group was missing two roll pins. So I pitched an adult man-child internet tantrum about it and of course I get a phone call from PSA's operations manager. More or less, that conversation involved lamentation about the fact that PSA is actually trying to turn over a new leaf as not just a budget brand, but a high quality minded for the money budget brand. PSA, they have a great warranty. They asked me to send in the gun to be fixed at no charge to me. And I had an in-depth discussion with them about the rock and their ambitions for the rock at that time. In my mind, for 350 bucks, you'd have to be stoned to think that the rock would roll, but I wasn't going to take that for granted. It could be a diamond in the rough. To find out, I got this schist on the slate for a review. And I promise you, this review is gonna be pretty nice. Today, we subject the rock to a 1,000 round torture test. Let's talk about the gun. PSA, extremely proud of the ergonomics on this gun, and they are pretty good. Personally, I think all the 5.7s I've shot have good ergonomics, but PSA expended a considerable amount of effort and time to make this frame as ergonomic as possible to the point where they even included engineers who had previously worked on the military's MHS pistol submission designs to make this frame as comfy as possible. Good texture, a palm swell, a subtle thumb shelf with a nice trigger guard undercut, some grip on the mid frame for your support thumb. It's also got good front and rear slide serrations, a perfectly fine magazine release and a decent slide release, even though the slide release isn't ambi. Not bad, PSA. It's otherwise very similar to the Ruger 5.7. That is to say that both are polymer frame 5.7 pistols using an internal lever delay device pioneered by FN with metal slides two-dimensionally. The Rock and the Ruger, very similar in appearance. For that matter, you can take a Ruger 5.7 magazine. I did. And you can try to use it in the Rock. I did. Although the magazine retention cutout is in a different place on the mag bodies, these mags are pretty much identical. The Ruger magazine functions perfectly as long as you teacup the grip to keep the mag from falling out of the gun. A little teacup. Just won't hold. Let's see. Came out a little bit. There's really not much to the $350 most basic version that I purchased. Standard sights, simple design, fit and finish, not bad, but you're not going to mistake this for like a super high-end pistol. 
They do make more high-end versions with more bells and whistles, including optics, threaded barrels, lightning cuts, night sights, and more for around 600 bucks on the top end, which is pretty reasonable. Fit and finish, not bad for 350 bucks. Slide is 416 stainless steel with a QPQ, that is quench, polish, quench, finish. Remember that FN uses a polymer over steel slide, a bit like a Glock magazine. Smith & Wesson uses a melanided stainless slide that is notoriously durable in its M&P series. The Rock also uses a lightened fluted barrel, which to me was quite a surprise. That's extra machine time. The trigger is very glocky. There's a short amount of take up, a six to six and a half pound wall and a break. This feels very similar to a Glock trigger. It's a striker fired polymer frame handgun. It's got a similar short reset. You can see it right here. In my mind, the Smith & Wesson is still the king of 5.7 triggers with its internal single action only hammer fired four pound trigger, but there's nothing wrong with the Rock if you like the Glock. One big feather in the Rock's cap, best in class capacity. The FN and the Ruger 5.7 hold 20 rounds in a mag. The Smith & Wesson holds 22, but the PSA Rock holds 23 plus one in the chamber. That is two dozen rounds of ammunition of a round that is touted to be superior to nine millimeter in a flat shooting handgun that's about as light and thin as a Glock 19. About that. Recoil is, of course, non-existent, as with every 5.7 pistol. One of the great things about 5.7, you're basically shooting a really spicy 22 caliber round, which means low recoil in spite of the fact that you could probably make hits on a man-sized target at 200 yards with a 5.7 in an optic. We used the cheapest gun, so we got the cheapest ammo. At $29.99 a box, we took AAC's 40 grain VMAX ammo, very similar to SS197SR manufactured by FN, and it's apparently pretty effective in terms of terminal performance if you uh, look up incidents involving the 5.7 and SS197SR ammunition. Now, SS197R, like most hollow point 5.7 rounds, doesn't defeat soft body armor, at least in our testing it didn't, and 5.7 armor piercing rounds are pretty difficult, but not impossible for civilians to find or get their hands on. 5.7 hollow points, as I mentioned, they typically don't defeat even soft body armor, but we did try the AAC 5.7 ammo against soft plates anyways. I uploaded that as a separate video on my personal channel, so swing over there, check it out, and see if the AAC ammo performed any differently, maybe even better than the FN ammo. We broke up the 1,000 round torture test into three range sessions over six months. We didn't clean or lubricate the gun prior, during, or as you see, after shooting it, this gun's never been cleaned or lubed. Hasn't seen even a drop of WD-40 as we sit here today. We shot 200 rounds on the first day, just screwing around at the range. And we were actually pretty impressed with how functional and relatively accurate this pistol is. We shot 200 raw dog rounds, zero malfunctions. All right, here's 15 rounds prep and fire. You can see the sights are still a little, little left. I drifted them right a bit, but yeah, we're getting from seven yards, we're getting pretty good casual accuracy. We bring the PSA Rock to the best indoor gun range in Louisiana, the Neutral Ground Gun Company, just outside of New Orleans at 212 Acock Street in Airby, Louisiana. We shot 600 rounds in one quick range session. We heated the gun up to the point it was too hot to touch. Believe it or not, the boys from Defense Distributed, the manufacturers of the Ghost Gunner machine, they came over to help us out. Does this all of a sudden mean that maybe we'll be getting working plans for a 5.7 pistol out of the GG3S? I certainly hope so. 600 more rounds down, bear in mind, we still had not cleaned the gun. It had been sitting like dirty for a couple of months or a couple of weeks between the first and second range session. We had no malfunctions. We only had 200 rounds left to go. What do you think happened? Now, before we bring you to the thrilling conclusion of this video, we didn't accept money from PSA, and I bought this gun with 350 pieces of unbacked federal currency that I exchanged for labor, and AAC was kind enough to send a case of ammo to let me test out in the video. We rely on you guys, our viewers, to support us. Again, we don't shill for manufacturers. It'd be a lot easier, it'd be a lot more profitable if we did, but we just won't do it. For that reason, consider supporting us and bear in mind that we give away $1,900 in gift certificates to Top Gun Supply and Blue Alpha every single month, only to our supporters. So what happened on the last range session? You guys are not gonna f***ing believe this, but...
All right, I tried to make it as suspenseful as possible, but yeah, pretty much the same thing that happened with the other 800 rounds also happened with the last 200. No issues whatsoever. Gun ran flawlessly. We have had this gun for over six months. We took it to the range three times. We never cleaned it. We never lubed it. Not even once. Ran perfectly, even with the cheapest ammo money can buy. 1,000 rounds. No lubrication. No cleaning. No failures. $350. Ah. I don't want to be impressed. I don't but I can't help it. I want to say mean things about this gun, but I can't. This is the cheapest 5.7 pistol made. At $350 is absolutely insane. And it performs, feels great, shoots well. It is so hot right now, can't even touch it. Look at that, oh shit, it actually is steaming. That's wild. I always try to cram in at least one negative factor into all my reviews, but when you're talking about a $350 gun that just smoked a 1,000 round test, it's kind of tough to find one here. I'll say that everything's pretty rudimentary in this gun. In other words, it's basically like a PSA dagger, but in 5.7. If it were me, I still prefer the Smith & Wesson 5.7, but the Smith & Wesson's double the price of the rock. In the basic version, the rock's no frills, no threaded barrel, which you do get with the Smith & Wesson, to be fair. And you're not going to mistake this for a Smith & Wesson, but the important thing is that it works, and it works well. Guys, do the math with me here. $350 gun, 1,000 rounds of 5.7 costs 600 bucks, almost double the price of the gun itself. That's more ammo than most of you will probably ever put through your $350 PSA rock. So that's good durability, but getting back to the negatives, it's safe to say that I'm skeptical of any gun that's this inexpensive. The argument would then be, okay, James, how about PSA charges $700 for it then? I get it, but then if I paid $700 for the Rock, I would say it feels like a $450, maybe $500 gun. So it isn't just about the price. It's a little bit like comparing Gerber or Kershaw to Benchmade or like a Sabenza. You're not going to say that a Kershaw leak is crap, but if someone tried to charge you $200 or $250 bucks for one, you might say, hold up. But Kershaw knives, like the PSA Rock, while being unassuming and relatively inexpensive, they present an outstanding value and they exceeded my expectations. If PSA wants to send me another 1,000 rounds of their AAC ammo, I will run this back again and I'll see if it lasts 2,000 rounds, maybe 3,000 rounds, maybe 4,000 rounds. F it. Who knows? It's a lot of work. Someone's got to do it. I've even got a blood blister on my finger from shooting this thing last week. 10 cases of ammo without cleaning this thing? If it runs, I'll step off my high hat and eat my horse. Wait. Um, step off my high horse and eat my hat is what I meant. I do got to say, I didn't know that eating horse was a thing until a couple of years ago when I was in Europe. Now I do it all the time. Not even joking. Best horse I had to ever eaten was at some Italian restaurant in Thun, Switzerland with the guys from B&T. That's a good place to stop the video. Bye, guys.